Hey everybody, Dan here with Hardly Brief Tutorials. Today we're going to take a look at crouching. How can we get our player to crouch? We're going to first set up our controller and keyboard so that we can take another input. Then we're going to look at actually adjusting our collider size. After that, we're going to end the video with actually swapping our sprite so it looks a little bit different on screen. Uh, in the next several videos, again, we're going to cover jumping and then we're going to look at using ray casting and different collider overlap features to look for whether or not our player is grounded or if there is something above their head. If that all sounds interesting to you, please like and subscribe. Make, you, make sure you hit the notification icon, that really does help. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're in our Unity project and to add crouching, the first thing we need to do is collect an input from the controller or the keyboard. In order to do that, we need to click the game, our game controller asset. It's going to open up the action map window where we can actually add the actions we want. So under the actions column, I'm going to click the plus button and I'm going to type the word crouch. This is what we're going to call our action. We're going to add two bindings to it. I'm going to keep the action type as button. The first binding is going to be on my controller. I'm going to hit the X button. So I'm going to go to path, click listen, and hit X, which is the West button. And then we're going to click the add button to add another binding. And this one's going to be our keyboard. So I'm going to go back to path and I'm going to hit the left control on my keyboard. You'll see left control keyboard. And that's going to allow us to crouch. Because we have autosave selected and we have generate C sharp class, Unity will automatically generate our game controller script and we can jump into our player controller script and actually add the code we want. First thing we're going to do is create a public bool. And this bool is going to be called crouching pressed. And our player movement script is going to access this through a public get. And then our player control script is going to set it through a private set. This is going to allow us to figure out whether or not outside this script, <clears throat> excuse me, if our player has actually pressed crouch. Now we need to do the same thing we did with horizontal by setting up the controls. So we're going to say controls dot player controls dot crouch dot started. So as soon as we hit the button, we want this to go off. We're going to set this equal to context and then our Lambda and we're going to say crouching pressed is equal to true. I'm going to highlight this entire line. I'm holding shift and control and then using the arrow keys. Control C to copy and then control V to paste. I'm going to change crouching press to false and change started to canceled. So as soon as we let the button up, we're no longer crouching or, or excuse me, we're no longer pressing crouching. So we want to set that equal to false. And then uh, we can now access this variable in player movement. There's another way to do this. and this might be a better way going forward so that we can add like expanded functionality if we need to. And that's by actually creating a method that is called instead of just actively setting the variable. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say private void crouch. And then I'm going to make another one called private void stand up. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste crouching press equal to true. And then crouching press is equal to false. And instead of setting those variables, I'm actually just going to call that method. Now this seems like a weird way to do it because it's doing the exact same thing just with more lines of code. But what's great about this is if we start wanting to do more with when we hit crouch and we need to do other something other than just setting this flag to true or false, this will allow us to do that. Maybe we need to call other functions. Maybe we want to collect how many times the player presses crouch really up to you, but this way it will allow us to do that. So now that this works, we can actually access these variables, this crouching press variable in our player movement script. So the first thing that we're going to add is another header and we're going to create some information that we need for crouching. So we're going to do brackets, square brackets, and we'll say header and then parentheses. And we're just going to say crouch info. And again, this is just used for the inspector to make it a little bit more organized. And then we're going to create a public float and we're going to call this crouch percent of height. And let me capitalize that O. And this value is going to be used to adjust the percentage of change you want with the Y with the height of the collider. So if our collider is one unit and we want half of it, we would just do 0.5 F and then you hit uh, our semicolon. This will allow you to adjust that. So if you're trying to fine tune your sprite and you really want it to be 5 point, or 0.51, 5.2, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5
70 <clears> percent <throat> it's really up to you but this allows you to adjust that uh, and then we're going to create a public bool and this is just a status flag letting us know that we are actually crouching so we're going to say public bool is crouching and we'll have a get so other classes can look at this but we'll have a private set meaning that we can only set it within this class uh, and then we need a bunch of private variables so we need private vector twos and this is going to allow us to cache our player collider size when we start so our standing size and then our crouching size so we're going to say private vector two stand collider size we need another private vector two that captures our standing offset size so we'll say stand collider offset and then I'm gonna copy these two and just paste and change it so instead of stand it's crouch and if you're in uh, visual code you can actually hold alt and click and highlight multiple spots so I can replace this all at once so we'll hit crouch collider size and offset and then that should be it that we need uh, to get crouching working for now so once we have these variables, let's go down to our wake method and we need to actually do the math to figure out what these offsets and uh, collider sizes are. So standing is pretty simple. We're going to say stand collider size is going to be equal to our player collider dot size, which we capture here. And then we're going to come in and say our offset is going to be equal to our player collider dot offset. Now to calculate our crouch, a little bit more in depth but not that complicated so we're going to say crouch collider size is equal to a new vector 2 and for crouching the only thing I want to adjust is my player height if you want to adjust the players width as well you can do that but in my case I'm not so I'm just going to say stand collider size dot X because I'm going to keep that the same I'm only going to adjust our stand collider size dot Y and I'm actually going to multiply this value by the height percent so we're going to say crouch height percent of height and this is going to give us the adjusted height collider height uh, when we hit the crouch button and we need to do the same thing for our offset so I'm going to just highlight that go up here double click crouch collider offset double click offset size and replace it and everything in here we need to actually say collider offset and we should be good to go so now that when we hit the crouch button, we're going to use these values, the crouch collider size and offset, to adjust our player's height. Uh, and in order to do that, it's pretty simple. So what we're going to do is blow our fix update. We're going to create a private void method called crouch. And in this, the first thing that we want to do is probably set our player crouching to true. We want to say uh, that, hey, we have crouch. So we're going to say is crouching is equal to true meaning we are crouching and then we need to actually adjust our player size so we're going to use the reference that we've made to our player collider so we're going to say player collider dot size is going to be equal to our crouch size and then we're going to say player collider dot offset again is going to be equal to our crouch offset and that's it there's one problem though this method won't ever get called because we're not calling it anywhere uh, and we need to add that to our fixed update. So I'm actually going to highlight this and copy and paste, control C, and we're going to paste it uh, right below our velocity X. So now we have another issue. Our fixed update is going to run multiple times a frame, and we're just going to constantly call crouch. So we're going to be constantly in crouch, in the crouch method. It crou is crouching, it's always going to be true. So what we need to do is actually look for that crouch pressed variable that we created in the player control script so we're going to say if player controls dot crouching pressed if that's true then we want to go ahead and do this if it's false we don't want to do this but that becomes that brings up another problem we need to be able to figure out if our player has not or what happens when the crouching press is false we need to actually create another method called stand up so we'll say private void stand up and I'm gonna copy and paste copy all that what we just wrote and paste it and add an exclamation point in front of players control dot crouching press so this just says <clears throat> excuse me if that's false then we want to set is crouching to false so we know we're standing now uh, and then player Collider size and offset is going to be the stand offset and size that we cached earlier or created, calculated earlier 
in the awake method. Okay, so now that's it. Our player is going to crouch. We actually need to add our stand up method above our crouch method in the fixed update. So we're constantly running these checks all the time. And if we have everything set up correctly, which I think we do, we should be able to go into Unity and we can see our player crouch. Now, there, there's not going to be a visual difference uh, on screen, but we can go to scene mode and actually check out what our collider is doing. Uh, but let's let's press uh, let's press play. And our scene view on the right, if I hit the control button, you should be able to see. Let me turn the controller on. If I hit the X button for our crouch, you should see our player collider. This green outline actually goes to the half waypoint of our full standing collider. And again, if I use our keyboard, a left control, I'm hitting the keyboard now, it goes down, I release it, it goes up. And this is allowing us and showing us that our player's collider, which is going to, to, is going to detect collisions, is lowering and getting smaller. And what's cool about the variable that we set up, that percent height, is let's say you don't want your player to crouch that much. You can put it at 75% or 0.75, go back and press play. Again, I'll hit the crouch button. You can see that it actually is not crouching nearly as much. Uh, and this is a good way to fine tune what you need for your game. So if you know you're not going to have that tight of a space or it visually looks better if your character is only crouching a little bit, then you can adjust that height. The last thing I want to do in this video is set up a sprite controller that will allow us to visually change our sprite based on what we're doing. So in this case, when we crouch, we want to change our player's sprite, the visual look to match what's actually is, match the collider. So in order to do that, we're going to write a very simple script that will handle that. This is not the best way to do it, but while you're developing, this is a quick way to make it work. Um, so what I've gone ahead and done already in my sprites folder, I've added the crouching sprite. And what's really important about when you import your sprite in is you need to make sure the pivot is set to bottom and not center. So again, you can click just bottom and then click apply. It will apply that. We did that for our player standing sprite in the last video. Make sure you do that for this sprite. Also, both sprites will be available to download in the description below if you don't have a sprite to work with. But what we want to do is add a new script component. So we're going to say, uh, I'm going to go to add component, new script. I'm going to type in sprite controller, hit enter. It's going to add it, and then we're going to double click it, and we're going to add just a bit of code in order to get it to work. So I'm going to delete all that for now, and we're going to create a couple private or one private variable and several public variables. The first one's going to be a private player movement and this is going to be a, a private reference to our movement script that we've been working on and we'll say player movement. We're going to create a public sprite renderer and we're going to call this player sprite. This is going to allow us to access that game object that we added last time called sprite and then we need two public sprites which one is going to be standing, so this is our standing sprite, and then another one, public sprite, and this one will be crouching. Um, and we're going to use the awake method, so we're going to say void awake. And in this method, we're going to get reference to our actual player movement script that's attached to this game object. So we're going to say player movement is equal to this dot get component, and we'll say player movement. And then the controls is actually going to be in the update method. So we're going to say void update. And we'll say if our player movement dot crouching is false, then we're going to go ahead and set our player to standing, our sprite to standing. So we'll say exclamation point player movement dot is crouching. So if that's false, then we're going to say player sprite. dot sprite is equal to standing and then below this we're going to do another check and say if our player movement dot is crouching is true then we're going to set our player sprite dot sprite is equal to crouching so now that we have this bit of code this logic is just checking whether or not this is true or false if it's one way or the other it's going to adjust our sprite I'm going to go back into unity We'll see it adjust over here, and our public variables are present so that we can drag our sprite to the player sprite, and then we'll go into our sprites folder, click our player again, and drag and dro drop the appropriate sprite to the labeled 
name in the inspector. So we'll get our crouching and we'll grab our standing and I'll go into Unity and now I'll press play and hitting X on the controller, our sprite will change. As soon as I let go, it changes to standing back up. Again, X, it lowers and X letting go stands up. If I click our player and then click on our collider, you can see that it's still adjusting. So obviously this collider doesn't perfectly fit my sprite, but it's easy to adjust. So I can hit press play again to pause it, scroll down and change this instead of 0.5 to maybe 0.54, press play, hit crouch. And now it's a bit closer to the size of my sprite. And that's what's so great about that adjustment. If you have a larger sprite or even smaller sprite, you can use that percent change to fine tune the exact size of your crouching collider. So this is the basics of crouching. There's several things that we're not doing that we're gonna explore in the next video. We're not checking to see if anything's above our head and we're also not checking to see if there's anything below us. But I wanna first cover jumping and then we're gonna actually go into figuring out whether or not our character's grounded or if there's another thing above our head. If you guys like the video, please like and subscribe, please share it. If you haven't done so already, hit the notification button to sign up for notifications for when I release a new video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave some comments down below and I'll talk to you guys next time.